It's been described as a crime hidden in plain sight. Broadcaster Kate McCann has shared her horrifying ordeal of having her drink spiked while out with colleagues. And since then, she has been inundated with messages from men and women sharing their own experiences with her. In the year ending April 2023, police received more than 6,500 reports of spiking. 74% of the victims were women. The average age across all victims was 26 years old, but with so few victims coming forward to the police, the true figures look to be much higher. And, in fact, um, let's speak to Kate McCann now. Uh, alongside Charlotte Proudman, Dr Charlotte Proudman, you have both experienced this absolutely horrible crime. But neither of you reported it to the police, so you have sympathy with the fact that people don't. Mm -hmm. Kate, just describe what happened to you. So I was out for a drink after work um, with colleagues, so I didn't know very well, so, you know, it wasn't one of those nights where you're going to end up going out late, late or anything like that. And it, a friend that I was with said she'd saw somebody try to put something in our drinks, so we... we so, on, these drinks the had just arrived. They were brand-new drinks. Yeah, so we just, we'd just got a round of drinks. They were being put on the table, and she said, I've, I th I'm pretty sure I've just seen somebody put something in our drinks. A man. Yeah, and so we, we actually put them all back on the bar, and I remember thinking at the time, I had had a sip already, and I remember thinking, that is a real waste, um... because, <laughs> I mean, it's, a, it's quite a lot of money. Put them back, got new drinks, started you know, had a drink, had, started chatting, and I remember feeling about 15 minutes later, something was just wrong. And unless this has happened to you, it's actually really difficult to describe mm. because you know that it's not alcohol. It doesn't feel the same as alcohol. It feels like your brain knows that something is happening, but your body is not doing what you're asking it to. Mm. So your, your brain is going at two different speeds. So mm. I knew that something wasn't right, I just couldn't make my body move in the way that I was asking it to. Why didn't you tell your friends you suspected that Because I was embarrassed. I, I didn't... You, you can't work out quite what's going on. So mm. I knew something wasn't right. I felt really hot and I thought, right, I'm just going to go to the loo. I'm just going to go to the bathroom. I'm going to lock myself in a loo. I'm going to try and figure out what's going on here. And I remember being sat in that cubicle and having to lean on the edge because I couldn't remain <sighs> upright. I could get myself an Uber, which I booked, booked a car to go home, and, and I didn't say anything because you know something's wrong, but you can't work out what it is. It, it's like something is happening in slow motion. It's like trying to wade through treacle. Yeah. And, and you feel a kind of shame. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, I was out with people that I work with. I was out with people that I didn't know as well as some of my closest yeah. friends. And I didn't want to say something's gone wrong here because I couldn't explain what it was. Also, I think what's really interesting is that you've literally been drugged. Yeah. I mean, that's... It's, it feels like a kind of assault, but because of what they've done, your brain can't work out what's happened. So I know that there was a point where you were thinking, what, am I, what would I report here? I mean, it's like they're committing a crime that they know they're, they're going to get away with, because the crime they've committed has stopped you working out what's yeah. happened to you. Mm. And I think this is the thing, you know, we've, we've all talked about spiking before and lots of people have heard stories about spiking before and we know that it's been a problem in nightclubs, for example, young people, freshers' week, mm. it's a problem. God, it's horrible. And people horrible. need to report it. But what has really surprised me after what happened to me is the number of older men the number of couples on dates, mm -hmm. the number of mm -hmm. young lads. I mean, I had a, a that really... this has happened to? This has happened to. I had a really moving email from a, a guy in his 60s who'd been spiked in his local village pub. He was out Jeez. for a pint on his own. He doesn't remember getting home. His wife found him the next day, had to take him to hospital. He was basically paralysed from what happened to him. And he begged and pleaded with police and hospital staff to say, I didn't do this to myself, mm. and they didn't believe him. He's never drunk since then. Just to finish your story, you, you remember calling an Uber. You don't really remember anything more about how you got home yeah. or how you got through your front door. And the next thing you know, it's four in the morning and you're lying flat on your face on, the, on, on your bathroom floor. On the bathroom floor, yeah. yeah. And how long did it then take for these terrible symptoms to leave you? So I was really, really unwell um, for the whole of the next day. I wouldn't have physically been able to leave the house even if I had wanted right. to, which is part of the problem here with reporting and, and being tested. You need but to But here's be the thing, quickly. Kate. You then subsequently went along with the fiction with your, yeah. your, your colleagues that you'd had too much to drink. Well, I looked up the messages from the next day that I'd sent to the people that I was out with and I actually asked them, I think I might have been spiked, do you think that that's possible? And some of the responses are, 
no, you can't have been spiked. You must have just had too much to drink. Even though one of your group had seen, had seen the spiking happen. Weird. Yeah. Weird. I think it's. A, I think there is a thing that happens where people. It happens to want to make. You want to make out like it's okay because, as you say, I did get home. Nobody stole anything from me. Thankfully, nothing worse happened to me. Nobody assaulted me. No, but so sorry, Kate. Someone did assault you. You were spiked. No, you were spiked. <laughs> well, I was going to say physically, but you're no, right. You Somebody did physically there wasn't assault a me, but there wasn't anything that I could go to the police and say. Look, to be frank, somebody has has raped me. That hasn't no. happened to me, but it has happened to lots of other people. Well, Charlotte, what happened to you? Mm. So, I mean, quite a similar experience to Kate in that I went out with friends. It was a friend's birthday party pre-COVID. Um, and I had my drink spiked. Um, I, I literally just ordered a round of drinks with everybody else. Drinks were at the table, fully watched. It wasn't as if I left them on guard yeah. and went off dancing, came back. I'm already sort of blaming myself. For <laughs> yeah, no, I'm already yeah, finding I want to exonerate both of you from any sense <laughs> this had doing doing anything it. to do what you did. I'm already doing it. And all I'll say is I was lucky to get home in one piece that mm. night. And it's almost as if the memories are very fragmented. Yeah. I felt extremely heavy in my body, like an absolute weight. Yes. Um, and then I'm ex excruciatingly ill, and I've never been like that, even mm. when I've uh, been drunk. And I remember just sitting on the side of the, um, the place when we came out on the curb, and a friend just dragging me into a taxi to get me home. Thank mm. God she did. Mm. And I spent the whole of the weekend just in and out of it, feeling blacked out. Mm. I couldn't move from my bedroom. What do we think the motives for spiking are? I mean, I, I would mm. make the assumption that they're broadly sexual. Um, they're an attempt to incapacitate usually a woman, but as you say, very often a man as well, um, in order to have sex with them. Um, but it's not just simple as that, is it? I don't think it is anymore. I think I do think that is still a big motivating factor, and there mm. has been some research done on this, and it is one of the biggest motivating right. factors. But I think in the case of where it's happening, it's happening in groups of young men who are out on nights out, where it's happening to older men, where it's happening to people on dates, there is a, there's a there's a group of people now who think it's funny to watch this, and mm. there is so a, it's a control a, issue. There's a control issue. There's also a real concern that you know this is people egging each other on for fun, because these drugs are very readily available online, and you know the rate of actual incidents that are prosecuted 0.25 percent of reported spiking incidents get prosecuted. That's mm. worse than rape. What do you yeah. think the problem is when? I mean, partly the problem is that, as we've established, it's hard to report. Yes. You're not in a state yeah. where yeah. you are clear about what's happened. Yes. Um, you haven't got the physical capacity to get yourself somewhere for a blood test, which would be necessary. Mm. But are nightclubs, bars, premises, are they acting responsibly? Are they collecting CCTV? I mean, you're a barrister, Charlotte. Yes. I wonder if you know the, the kind of legal, prosecutional side. Well, you know, I think, I think you're right that clubs and bars need to be doing an awful lot more, especially making sure that they have people's ID when they go in, making sure that there's thorough yes. CCTV. When thinking about the police, what women have said when they've reported instances of spiking to the police is they've felt disbelieved, they've felt blamed as a result. They've been turned away, they've been told this is not a criminal offence. And Spiking is not a specific crime. Whilst there are other pieces of legislation that could potentially result in a prosecution mm -hmm. or conviction, it's few and far between. In my view, we need a piece of legislation to make crystal clear spiking is illegal instead of using legislation that dates back to the Victorian era, 1861, mm -hmm. when clearly spiking wasn't an issue mm -hmm. back but it, then I, so, it is I, now. I presume it's the uh, use of a noxious substance or something like that, but... Uh, mm. I, I, honestly, I feel absolutely enraged on your behalf. I think it's, I cannot believe that this is going on, the level it's going on, and people are literally mm. getting away with it, that they think it's funny, it's disgusting. Kate, I'm so given, sorry given for you about your initial reaction was, was shame and to self-blame and to hide, um, why have you done a complete reversal now and come out and spoken about it so publicly? Because a colleague of mine, Megan Agnew, did a really a, a deep dive investigative piece of work in the Sunday Times on spiking, and what she found is what we are talking about here, that it's not just young women. It's, it's a much... I mean, it, that's, that is a big enough problem in and of itself, but it is a really big problem, and I think it's something that we need to talk about, and mm. I regret not reporting it. I wish I had done. The police have only just started collecting statistics in 2022, 23. So if it happens to you, if you know somebody it has happened to, report, report. it so we can get a better... To the police and to the, and to the bar. Report it to the bar, yeah, definitely. I mean, and also because it will, it will help other people to yes. understand that this is something that can happen to you. And it's not just if you go out to a club. 
it can happen to you anywhere, sadly, and I think we all probably need a 60 to be A 60-year-old man, man in yes, a pub the shame in, that in the countryside. shame was the thing that came yeah. through in that email. He felt deeply ashamed that not one person in the police or the hospital where he went to believed him. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you both very much. Thank you both Thank you. for your honesty. And, um, I, you know, I hope bar staff, as you say, you know, they help, that they look out for it, that they warn you that they have your back and that they cooperate with the police. Thanks both so much for uh, coming in. If you are affected by that issue, or indeed any of the issues we've been discussing this morning, there is advice and support at itv.com forward slash helplines.